Hello students, welcome to the APG Patshala. I am Vidya Kothekar from All India Institute of Medical Sciences, but also had an opportunity to work at other institutes as professor and head of biotech, bioinformatics in JP Institute of Information Technology, director of DY Patil Biotech and Bioinformatics Institute, and have been teaching biophysics for over 45, 50 years. Today, I am going to talk about a module that is the absorption spectroscopy of proteins, peptide bond, aromatic amino acids, and prosthetic group. This belongs to the paper techniques used in molecular biophysics. After completing this module, what you should be able to understand is, you should be able to describe basic features of absorption spectroscopy of proteins. We should be able to discuss absorption by a peptide bond non-aromatic or aromatic amino acid, disulfide linkages, and protein cells. We would like to discuss applications of this technique for studying the prosthetic groups in protein. There are many. All metal proteins do have some kind of prosthetic group. We should be also able to use to determine the pK values of amino acids, use it for conformational changes in proteins, for protein folding, also use it for protein ligand interaction, enzyme kinetics, and various other fields. What is absorption spectroscopy? Absorption spectroscopy measures photon absorption of a sample dissolved in the transparent medium. This is done in ultraviolet, visible or near infrared range of electromagnetic radiation with the energy 150 to 400 kilojoules per mole. This is a very, very important range for most of the biomolecules. The molecules with the electrons in delocalized atomic orbital system, such as proteins, nucleic acid, and their constituents, they all absorb in near UV, that is 150 to 400 nanometers, and visible 400 to 800 nanometer region. Their absorbance depends linearly on concentration. This is the most important property. And latter leads to many, many applications in biochemistry, medicinal chemistry, biophysics, industry, forensic science, everything, what uh, agricultural science and etc. Let us see basic features of proteins. Proteins are very, very important biomolecules. And they control body's vital functions. Actually, we are what our proteins are. Proteins are either linear polymer or aggregates of linear polymer. These are built from amino acids, AA. What are amino acids? The amino acids have a backbone, continuous backbone. Each amino acid has an amino group, NH2, and a carboxyl group, COOH group. This is attached to an asymmetric carbon, which is called C alpha carbon. There is also an H atom attached to C alpha for all amino acids except proline. And the fourth valence 
of this alpha is completed by side chain R and R can be hydrophobic, hydrophilic, aromatic or basic in nature. We show in this figure the side chains of various amino acids. The hydrophobic side chains, neutral side chains, acidic side chains and basic side chains which gives different properties to the protein when they are connected to the protein backbone in a protein chain. Peptide bond formation is explained in this slide rather. We have two amino acids, the carboxylic end of one amino acid and amino end of the second amino acid comes together and a oxygen from the carboxylic group and two hydrogen from the amino group combined to make a water molecule which leaves. Then what is left is CO of the first amino acid and NH of the second amino acid and they join together to give a peptide bond. Again the peptide bond formation and its properties are explained in this slide rather. The CO and NH group of two adjacent amino acids which form the peptide bond and they have partial double bonded character because the pi bond resonates between CO and NH group and this leads to planarity of the peptide bond or CO NH group. The n pi star transition in the peptide bond is usually observed between 210 and 220 nanometers with epsilon at lambda max equal to 100. And we show here the n pi star transition in the blue color in the right hand side picture. The main pi pi star transition is around 190 nanometers and for this we have epsilon equal to 7000 which is shown in red color in this picture. Let us see absorption by non-aromatic side chains. Non-aromatic side chains for example histidine, arginine, glutamine, glutamic acid, ASN, ASP. These have a transition around 210 nanometers but this is usually not observed. Why? This is because it is masked from the absorption from more intense amide bond of the backbone which absorbs at 230 nanometer and 290 nanometer. It consists of at least three unresolved electronic transitions. Absorption by heme group. The heme group absorbs invisible range solid band at 429.5 nanometer. There are series of partially forbidden Q bands between 500 and 600 nanometers as shown in the figure on the left hand side. Both these bands are due to electronic transitions, singlet to singlet, mostly n pi star type. This is the reason why hemoglobin is red. We show here a typical absorption spectra of oxy and deoxy hemoglobin. There are a number of membrane proteins like plastocyanin, plastoquinine and so on. These always have a cofactor like plastocyanin has a copper containing cofactor shown in the lower part of the left hand side figure and where the copper ion is bond to Histidine 37, 84, 87 and 92 and there is a transition, charge transport transition which is due to CuS1 bond where SP pi Cu dx square minus phi square gives to go to charge transport and this gives blue color to the plastocyanin. The spectrum is shown in the lower figure. 
and unligated states can be calculated. Time resolved absorption spectroscopy is a very interesting technique. For example, in the case of heme protein, if you have three different proteins having heme group, rather, example, cytochrome C, myoglobin, or oxidized hemoglobin, and one can calculate get the time resolved spectrum and find out really what is the difference in the local environment of the prosthetic group. These are very, very crucial for biological function. The energy barriers that have to be surmounted in these so many reactions can be determined, which is very important for biochemistry. PK1, PK2, and PKR. Free amino acids are present in neutral aqueous solvent in dipolar zwitter ionic forms, amphoteric or amphalites as these are called. The PK values for them are defined as the actual midpoints of the curve shown in the left hand side at which half of the protons of the conjugated acid are dissociated after addition of half or one half of base equivalent. In the figure is shown the titration curve for LR and PK1 and PK2 dissociation of the carboxylic group in the acidic pH and dissociation of amino group in basic pH and their PKR side chain PK values are also shown. Let us see how can we determine PK values. Hydrophobicity character shows considerable variation in PK values for glycine, alanine, valine, isoleucine. This can be estimated using delta G, the free energy for transfer of amino acid from water to organic solvent for different side chains. How it is done? This is done by subtracting the contribution for backbone or value for glycine using UVV spectroscopy because there are specific spectral changes associated with them. And we, we can determine delta G values and from there we can determine the uh, PK values. Let us see a typical example of pH on tyrosine spectrum. Exposure of tyrosine can be detected by examining the spectrum of proteins at higher pH because you can see that it shows two different spectra at lower pH and higher spectra as uh, pH. So, the tyrosine residue is solvent accessible, then the side chains would be deprotonated with PK value approximately 10 or more. Let us see the calculation for tyrosine. Tyrosine has absorbance maxima at 280 nanometer at pH 7. The PK of the phenolic group of tyrosine is 10.1. So at pH greater than 10, tyrosine at absorbs at 295 nanometer. Then one can follow the decrease in optical density at 280 nanometer and increase in absorbance at 295 nanometer to determine the pK values using the equation given here that is pH equal to pK dash plus log of tyrosine at whatever absorbance you have to tyrosine. We described here determination of pK values for amino acid as per the paper by Baran in 1997 who used efficient 5H2O minus 3 which has lambda max at 450 nanometer which shifts towards the lower wavelength side 410 nanometer in concentrated solution. He also used ruthenium compound RUCN 5H2O minus 3, which provides more labile coordination 
that allows for the incorporation of amino acid to determine pk values for number of amino acids as per the equation which is given below when strong acid hclo4 is added to fecn5 l to the power minus 3 and ruthenium cn5 l to the power minus 3 there is a change in electronic spectrum now pk values can be determined by plotting absorbance as a function of h plus for fixed lambda and ph using graphics and numerical methods can be determined which is showing this figure spectroscopic titration of ruthenium cn5 16 minus 3 at 22 degrees in mu equal to 0.100 m nacl o4 we show in the figure the determination of pk values for cysteine residues number of cysteine complexes were examined and the pk a values were determined the pk values for alanine lysine valine are respectively 2.53 2.65 and 2.58 while those of lysine arginine and cysteine are respectively 2.5 2.63 and 3.47 native proteins can be unfolded by denaturants as guanidinium chloride gdmcl or urea there can be uncoiling due to heating change in ph or refractive index of the buffer if there is a rupture of ss linkage then it would lead to exposure of chromophores and change in absorbance now these changes can be monitored using uv based spectroscopy this calculation of protein conformation folding unfolding absorption at 280 nanometer for example can be calculated as a linear combination of absorbance of these groups we have to first calculate number of tryptophan tyrosine or disulfide linkages and once we calculate ntrp ntyr or nss in a protein we can use it in a relation given below like extinction coefficient at 280 nanometer equal to 5500 multiplied by ntrp plus 1490 multiplied by n tyrosine plus 125 multiplied by n ss trp tyrosine ss have epsilon equal to 5500 1490 and 125 this is how we get the relation we can study protein ligand interaction enzyme kinetics number of things depending on what are the changes in the uv vis absorption spectroscopy or uv vis absorption spectrum of these molecules so it is a very very powerful technique for steady state and time resolved studies of protein ligand interaction the prosthetic groups in proteins frequently have a strong absorbance band that depend on oxidation ligation and conformational state of the protein and also can be followed by uv vis spectroscopy one of the examples i can give you of kumasi brilliant blue g50 cbb and its interaction with the protein bsa the dye gumasi brilliant blue blue g50 cbb is used for bradford protein assay or calorimetric protein assay with bovine serum albumin bsa protein under the acidic conditions the red from the dye is converted into the blue form after binding to the protein to be acid kumasi dye donates its free electron to the ionizable groups in proteins 
which cause disruption of the protein's native state, exposing its hydrophobic pockets. Next, these pockets bind non-covalently to the non-polar regions of the dye through Van der Waals interaction and positioning positively charged amino acids in the proximity of the negatively charges of the dye. Gumasi brilliant blue G50 and interaction with BSA. Now we show in the left hand side figure three spectra. One Kumasi blue which has maximum at 273 nanometer. Then BSA which has maximum at 278 nanometers and the complex which has couple of peaks around 275 nanometer. There is also a change in the spectra which is shown on the right hand side figure between 550 to 750 nanometer which is in visible region. Complex formation in this case can be measured by the absorbance at 595 nanometer blue. Let us see some use of UVB spectroscopic technique for the study of enzyme kinetics. The rate at which enzyme is being used depends on the substrate concentration, pH, temperature, presence of inhibitor, etc. And the catalytic event takes place in two steps. In the first step, an enzyme substrate complex ES is formed. The reaction product arises only when the enzyme substrate complex breaks. Let us see a typical example of tyrosine, which is a copper containing enzyme that can be used to catalyze the conversion of DL dopa to halochrome. Chrome. Halochrome is a red compound which absorbs in the visible radiation region at 475 nanometer. In thyrosinase, one of the copper atom binds to epsilon nitrogen of histidine 38, histidine 54 and histidine 63. The other copper atom binds to histidine 190, histidine 194 and histidine 216. Let me give an example of an enzyme thyrosinase which can convert DL dopa to halochrome. This reaction can be monitored by measuring increase in absorbance at 475 nanometer. The rate constant can be calculated either graphically as shown in the figure on the left hand side or numerically. So students, what have we learnt in this module? We have described UV's absorption spectroscopy of proteins. Application for the study of peptide bond, non-aromatic, aromatic amino acids, disulfide linkages, prosthetic groups of proteins and for PK values of amino acid is explained. We have also enumerated some applications for the study of conformational changes in proteins, protein folding and protein unfolding. Lastly, we have just acquainted you to the application of the technique for ligand protein interaction or enzyme kinetic. Thank you very much.